is John T for the Boxing Voice, and I'm joined this evening by English light welterweight prospect Henry Turner. How are you doing, Henry? All good, thank you, mate. You? Yeah, I'm really good. What have you been doing today? You've been sparring? Uh, no, it's easy week this week, fight week Saturday, so just taking it easy. Went for a nice little run earlier, just tapering down now, ready to go. Oh, yeah, it's Tuesday, isn't it? So when do you go in the bubble? Tomorrow? Tomorrow I go in the bubble, yeah, COVID test, and then I'm in there till, well, after my fight, Saturday, so... Yeah, I'm going to come on to the bubble in a minute because I think you're quite experienced on them now. But before we go any further, first time we've had you on the site. So for any of the fans who aren't aware, uh, another good win last time out on a TV card. So it was a BT yeah. card on the Denzel Bentley, Mark Heffron uh, undercard. And that moved you up to 4-0. How did you find the fight? Tell me about the fight. Yeah, yeah, found the fight good. It's a good performance. Um, took, I rushed it a little bit, but I was overall, I was happy. Um, this time looking to improve again and show more or more of my skill set sort of thing so yeah yeah I was overall it was a good performance so you're happy overall with it yeah yeah I was happy yeah and how how was the bubble experience then so I've, I think if you lots of fighters recently have been in it some of them find it so boring in your hotel room for a bit but was it weird not having fans yeah it is, it is a bit the first time I boxed was June uh, in the um, bubble last last year so it was my first fight, so I kind of got used to it. Like, the first time I'd done it, it, was, it, was, it wasn't very nice, to be honest. You're stuck in a room for three days on your own. Couldn't hardly walk, like, walk out anywhere. You just... So, yeah, it was boring. And it, it plays on your mind sort of thing. But the second time around, I boxed November. It was a lot easier. Like, where I was used to where I've done it before, I just used to everything, and I just cracked on and got on with it. Just got to do oh, it and you can watch a load of Netflix or box sets or something, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah, and make... I think, you know I mean? Just watch telly for three days. <laughs> yeah, fair play. Yeah, nice and relaxing. Well, look, that brings me on to the next fight. So you are out this weekend, we just mentioned. So you're going into the bubble tomorrow, have your test, sit in the room, weigh in Friday and then the big night Saturday. So it's another big card for you. You're on another Denzel Bentley undercard and that's a great 50-50 oh, yeah. fight. I'll come on to that in a minute. But what do you know about your opponent on Saturday, Henry? Um, I think I've had a kid uh, called Clayton Bricknell. I think he's got a 50 50 record. He's had 6 1 3, I believe. So a bit of a step up again. Not too usual. Like I've had a few journeymen, but now, yeah, stepping up. Hmm. He fought Ethan James uh, a few weeks back. Um, yeah, that's correct. I, I don't want to try and tee you up for a future fight, you two. I've met, I've interviewed both of you, but you've got similar records. And Ethan, a bit like yourself, he seems to have got quite a few rounds under his belt. You all four of your fights you've gone to points. Is that yeah. good for you because you're getting experience sometimes when you just turn a pro and the fights might be a bit easier and you don't get the rounds in? It must be quite good. Yeah, to, uh, to be honest, with you, the knockouts and that don't really seem to bother me that much because I'm getting the experience now. But when I box the later rounds and I've got to do longer rounds, I'm used to it. I've done it before. Whereas some of the, I know some of the, it's great kids knocking like knocking boys out in one, two, two rounds. But when they go on and then they jump into eight rounders and they've been doing four rounders, knocking boys out in two rounds, it's a lot. I think it. I think I think they struggle a little bit. But now I've had, I had my first six rounder and my last fight went all six rounds. So yeah, I'm getting lots of experience in and I'm happy sort of thing. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. That's just my opinion. And I'm a fan as well as obviously a journalist. But you do get some fighters that sort of like knock them out first, second round. They'll have like 10 fights and they've had like 20 odd rounds under their belt. But you, you might have 20 odd rounds after like half a dozen fights. And all that will do yeah. is help you further along the line. Tell yeah, me, help, you, yeah, help you in the future. Definite. Tell us a little bit about your amateur career, if you don't mind. I know that's back in the past now, a year or two ago. But you've got a very, very good CV from the amateurs. As an amateur, I won seven national titles. I won the European Games. I was European champion in 2016. Mm. Um, I won multiple, about five international championships. Uh, I ended up having 60 fights, losing four. So I've done all right as an amateur. Yeah, Speaker's right. gone a little bit muffled there as you sat back. I don't know if it's the. A... Oh, sorry, yeah. I had 60 fights. Only losing four. I don't know if you heard of me. I had seven national titles, a European title and about yeah. five international titles. So, yeah. yeah. That's stunning, mate. And again, that I'd heard lots about you and that you'd come up that way. And that, again, that will put you in good stead for the pros. I know you also live um, in Am in Amersham, in Buckingham. And you go all the way around to Kent, do you, for your gym? Yeah, I travel uh, 70, 70 miles. It is four and five times, four, four times a week. And the... Uh, 
I've got my strength and conditioning over this side, thankfully. But I used to do my strength and conditioning side in Tilbury as well. So I was driving 70 mile every day and it was quite hard work. And I, I, I work as well. So it, it was hard work. Going to work, then going boxing, going to work, going to strength. So and now I've, I've got my strength and conditioning base near me now. So it's helping me out a lot more. Good stuff. I must admit, it's obviously because of the gym that you're going there for. And I know for anyone who's not aware, you've got Archie Sharp in there, you've got Dennis McCann in there, you've got Sam Noakes in there. I think you've Jordan Reynolds has just joined and Al's your trainer down there. So you're in good hands, no doubt. So it's Yeah, we've got, we've got, it's one of the biggest up and coming gym for prospects in the country, I believe. 100% I agree. And all yeah. them fighters, we just mentioned pretty much all of them, they fight on BT cars with Frank Warren as well, right? So good. Yeah, good, um, yeah. Good sparring, good training for you, etc. So, what do you think on the main fight? So, obviously, I'm assuming you're confident you're going to come through. But what about the main fight on Saturday night? Can we push you for a winner there? That's a real 50-50 between Denzel. It ben is a, it's a, it's a massive, massive 50-50. I was talking to a man the, in the gym earlier, and it is you got Felix, and they're both good boxers. Both good boxers. I believe Denzel's got more power, and Felix has probably got a bit more skill set because he's amateur career. But, um, yeah, real 50 50. To be honest with you, myself, I can't pick a winner because I either think one on points or one by stoppage. You know what I mean? It's just wherever the fight goes. But big best of luck to both of them. It's going to be a cracker. Yeah, well said. It is a 50 50 fight. It is a hard one to pick. And styles make fights, right? So, exactly. Both... I think I believe it'll be a very good fight. One of the best fights of the year, I think. Yeah, they're happens. both undefeated. You know, it's for the Commonwealth and the British. So the winner goes on to bigger and better things, obviously. And, and the loser, they'll come again anyway, um, I'm sure. So great fight yeah, there. Definitely. Just before I let you go, i like to ask uh, the up-and-coming fighters about the weight you're in and the top boys at the weight. What are your thoughts, uh, Josh Taylor, is going to go and try and fight Ramirez and get all the belts at light world weight? Do we think Josh is going to win that? I believe Josh can do it, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I believe he's, he's an unreal fighter. Like, I watch him quite a bit. He's got a bit of a similar style to me. But yeah, he's, he's an unreal fighter. And that's another 50-50 fight because I know Ramirez is pretty good as well. So, mm. yeah, but I'm hoping he'll do it. Anyway, it's for Great Britain, so, yeah. Exactly. And then he'll have all the belts to be unified and undisputed, which will be great. Yeah, exactly. But- Look, Henry, thanks so much for your time. I know it's hard to get hold of you because you're busy training and but you're winding down now. Safe travel into the bubble tomorrow. We'll be watching on Saturday night. And uh, I think I'm due to come down and see you down your gym in a few weeks anyway. So we look forward to catching up soon, all right? Love Cheers, you. Henry. Thank you very much, mate. Thank, Thank you. I'll see you soon. Enjoy the video. Feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the Patreon dot com backslash the boxing voice we have tons of exclusive from border wars and title betting shows the list goes on and on and on but in addition to that if you guys have questions for fighters trainers or promoters this is where you can submit them we will run out get these questions answered and put it back on the show just for you guys appreciate it peace